Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and I'm going to start reading at verse 25 and read through verse 33. And this is what it says. In Jerusalem lived a man named Simeon, who was a good man and godly. He was waiting for the time when God would take away Israel's sorrow, and the Holy Spirit was in him. Simeon had been told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he saw the Christ promised by the Lord. The Spirit led Simeon to the temple. When Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple to do what the law said they must do, Simeon took the baby in his arms and thanked God. Now, Lord, you can let me, your servant, die in peace, as you said. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you prepared before all people. It is a light for the non-Jewish people to see and an honor for your people, the Israelites." Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what Simeon had said about him. Pray with me. Lord, to respond to you in amazement this day, blow in your spirit that when your spirit joins with our spirits, that we might cry out to you in praise, in amazement, in gratitude, and in thanks. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I've been thinking recently a lot about how much language has changed. You know, it wasn't that long ago that tweet was something that only birds did. Now people do it with their phones. And Twitter, well, that was something that your heart did. Now people blow up Twitter, and it's not violent at all. Who knew? Google, it used to be only mathematicians would talk about a Google. It was a noun. It's a one followed by a hundred zeros. Now Google is a, is a verb. It's something that we, we do when we're searching. And we Google things. I was Googling the other day is what I was doing. I was Googling what the top fears among people were. And do you know that the top fear is public speaking? And I started looking down through the other fears, and I discovered that about number five or six is the fear of death. And I was trying to make sense of that, putting all that together, and I discovered that if the number one fear is public speaking and the number six fear is death, that it's more stressful to be the person giving the eulogy at a funeral than it is to be the person in the casket. Well, if you've ever given a eulogy in a funeral, you know how stressful that is. It's incredibly stressful. Trying to put, draw together in words a life and what that life meant. Especially if it was a, a long and a good life. To try and, to sum up that life in words. Well, that's what Simeon's trying to do right here. Not at the end of the life, but at the beginning. He's looking in the face of a baby and he's coming up with, with words to say what that life means. And at the very end, it says, Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what he said. Now, that really is something. 
for a father and mother to be amazed at what someone else saw in the baby's face. Usually it's the father and the mother that see the baby blowing bubbles and they say, oh, isn't he so smart? He's thinking about math. They, they see things that nobody else sees. But here, it's the old man. It's the old man. It's Simeon. It's in the old man's eyes that he sees what other people don't see. Well, how is it that Simeon was able to see what others couldn't see? Well, that's what I want to talk about this morning. Simeon sees what others don't see. It's because Simeon... Simeon chose to do some holy waiting. He chose to do some holy waiting. We ought never make light of, of waiting, waiting for God. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not grow tired. That it's in the waiting that we're given God's strength. That godly waiting is, is, is a strong part, a th strong theme that goes from the beginning to the end of the Bible. That Noah was 120 years old before it started raining. That Abraham was 99 years old before he received that child of promise. That Joseph waited in jail for four and a half years before he was elevated from prisoner to the second highest position in all of Egypt. That the Israelites waited for 400 years in captivity before Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go. That Jesus, after his crucifixion, he rose from the dead and he, he came to his disciples and he said, stay. Stay in Jerusalem. Now, literally that word stay means sit. Sit in Jerusalem until you're clothed with power from on high. That the power, the strength, the Spirit of God comes in the waiting. It's in the waiting. It's in the holy waiting. That... um. If ever there were a word against our culture these days, it, it, it's that word, wait. But God speaks to those who take time to listen. God speaks to those who take time to listen. God speaks to those who, who do the, the godly waiting. A little while back, a friend came by the church to take me to lunch. He had just bought a new car. He was excited about it. He, he, I don't know if you know much about cars, but th this car was a Dodge Viper. I'm a little bit of a, a motorhead, and I was pretty excited that he'd, he drove his Dodge Viper to the church. And if you know much about cars, th the Dodge Viper parked in the church parking lot, well, just parked there. It looked like it was going way too fast. It was quite a car. Well, he showed me his car. I oohed and I odd. I, I and then we were going to lunch. We were going about 35, and as he was driving, we were looking at each other, talking, catching up, enjoying sharing with each other. At 65, he didn't ask for my help driving, but he needed it. I, I kept my eyes on the road, not on him. We kept a little bit of conversation going, but mostly I kept my eyes on the road, making sure nothing came up too fast. I'll go ahead and tell you, that at 110, all conversation ceased. That a lot of my breathing ceased as well. I wasn't looking over to him, trying to carry on any conversation at all. And it's the speed that we're living this life that's killing our souls. It cuts out all conversation. It cuts out our breathing. It keeps us from watching for God. It emphasizes the rush, rush, rush and the busy, busy, busy. As if that were the same thing as being productive. Productive for God. And it's not. No. God speaks to those who take time to listen. Simeon was able to see what others didn't see because he was waiting. He was doing godly waiting. 
And you know, I think you and I can do that waiting too. I think you and I can too. The second thing that I want to talk about is in verse 28. It says that Simeon took the baby in his arms and thanked God. That Simeon thanked God. He chose. He chose to thank God. One of my favorite books is a a little book by Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a psychiatrist before World War II broke out. And that uh, he was arrested by the Gestapo and thrown into Auschwitz concentration camp. He talks about what went on in the concentration camp there at Auschwitz. And he told about the the horrors and the gruesomeness of being in that concentration camp. He also talked about some of the things that he marveled at. One of the things that he he talked about, it was a a time when the prisoners were marched outside the camp. He said it was raining, it was cold. They were starving and they were exhausted. They were made to work all day and then they were marched back to the concentration camp at the end of the day. When they were sent to their barracks, they all collapsed into their beds. And that's when one of the prisoners came in and with excitement in his voice, he said, come out and see, come out and see. Well, Viktor Frankl said it was the excitement in this prisoner's voice that that roused the other prisoners up, and they went outside to see that the sun was was breaking through the clouds, and there in the puddles in the concrete courtyard, the sun began to, to shine and shimmer in the puddles. And that's when he said this. He said, we stood there marveling at the goodness of creation. We were tired and cold and sick. We were starving to death. We had lost our loved ones and never expected to see them again. Yet there we stood feeling a sense of reverence as old and formidable as the world itself. He chose to find thanks, gratitude, in the shining and shimmering of the sun in a puddle. Gratitude doesn't come from a surplus of toys, an abundance of stuff. It comes from a choice. It comes from a choice that we make. Viktor Frankl chose chose to give thanks in the shine and shimmer of a puddle. Simeon, this old man who who longed for death, chose to give thanks in the face of the Christ child. That you and I, it's a hard time, it's a difficult time. We still can choose thanks in the middle of a pandemic the way 1 Thessalonians 5.18 puts it, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know that the will of God is stated any more plainly than anywhere else in the Bible than it is right there. That in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It doesn't come from a, a surplus of of toys, an abundance of things. It comes from a choice, a choice that that you and I make to see God in a a puddle or a, a pandemic. A choice that that you and I can make through the power of His Spirit to give thanks. In a puddle, a pandemic, or Or maybe it's in the face of a stranger, of a husband, of a wife, of a friend, of a neighbor. It's choice. It's a choice that this old man made, this old man Simeon. 
And you and I can make that choice too with the power of His Spirit. How was Simeon able to see what others couldn't see? Well, he chose. He chose to give thanks. He chose to to wait, to do godly waiting. And he chose to seek hope. And that's the last thing that I want to talk about this morning. Read a story about Arnold Palmer. And it turns out that, (laughs) that he was invited to Saudi Arabia to play some um, exhibition golf for the king of Saudi Arabia. He played a few rounds, and the king was very impressed at Arnold Palmer's ability to, to play golf and to hit a golf ball. At the end of the exhibition, the king told Arnold Palmer, he said, I really want to, would like to, to give you a gift. Arnold Palmer said, well, that's not necessary. Uh, having an opportunity to come to your country, that, that's thanks enough. Well, the king said, no, I, I really want to give you a gift. I insist. So Arnold Palmer thought about it a little bit, and he said, okay, well, you know, a golf club would be a nice memento to remember your country, to remember your hospitality by. And sure enough, the next day, Arnold Palmer received a golf cl- club thousand acres, manicured greens, and a clubhouse. (laughs) And I guess the moral of the story is when you're standing in the presence of a king, don't think small. (laughs) When you're standing in the presence of a king, don't think small. Simeon was standing in the presence of the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And he didn't think small. He didn't think small at all. He was was seeking the hope of Israel. A time that says when, in, in, in verse 25, that Israel's sorrow would cease. He didn't think small. He, he was thinking of a time not only when his, Israel's sorrow would cease, but it says that in verse 30 where he would See, the Lord's salvation with his own eyes. And that, that word means, means rescue. That he would see God's rescue with his own eyes. A time when, when Jews and non-Jews would come together and see the light of God together. Together. Hope. Hope is what, what he wants. A hope where sorrow would cease. A hope of rescue. A hope of coming together. Well, hope has a name. And the name is Jesus Christ. And in the face of Jesus Christ, that's when, when, when Simeon's hope was realized. And it's the face of Jesus Christ that, that, that your hope and mine is realized as well. So often, we look to medicine in the hopes that our sorrow of this pandemic will cease. And that's not a bad thing at all, but God has more for you than that. So often we look to the, to the, to the hand of Caesar, whether it's the left hand or to the right hand of Caesar, and, and we cast our vote and we say, my, my hope is, is that, the, that my, my candidate will win. And, and it's not, government is not a bad thing, but whether it's the left hand or the right hand, our hope, we're still putting our hope in, in the power of Caesar, and God has more for you and me than that. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross for you and for me to wipe away sorrow, to wipe away that quest for power, that makes our wants and our self-interest the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That it's on the cross that Jesus wiped away not only sorrow, not only that self-interest, that sin, that quest for power, wiped away death. And he rose again that he might live his life through you and through me a risen Savior that has power that can't be offered through the greatest science in the world, 
A power that can't be offered through government. A power that comes only through the true King of kings, the only Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. And His desire is to have a relationship with you this morning and in every morning to come. It may be that you've never, you've never, you've never sought the hope of God in your life. Oh, sure, you, you, you hoped that God would do things, but you never sought Jesus. This morning, I want to pray with you. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, this is your morning, as was yesterday and as will be tomorrow, no matter what happens. We know that great strength, great power, great peace, it comes from you. Grant us grace enough, grant us strength enough to wait with a holy waiting. Lord, grant us grace, grant us strength enough eyes, eyes that see you and and give thanks. Lord, grant us grace enough and strength enough that we might receive, receive that relationship you desire this morning. Say yes to you. Yes to Jesus. The hope, the hope of the world Lord, we come to you also seeking repentance, change, a change of heart, a change of attitude, a change of mind, that we've spent too much of our time putting hope in, in earthly things that really seek to put us in the center of the universe, that really seek to put us on your throne, that really seek to to have you bow down to our wants. For this, we need forgiveness. And I'm thankful that what you did on the cross, it was enough to forgive. To forgive all that's past. It was enough to forgive all that keeps us captive now. Enough to forgive any sin we might forgive commit in the future and and that through the power of the risen Christ Lord you break that power of sin that we're no longer held captive and that we begin to follow you this day and in the days to come it's in your name we pray amen thanks again for joining us today Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.